But what I present is evidence. You can't get to a conclusion without the evidence. And this is a, a serious problem with the majority of our, quote, educational system. That's right. People are taught to guess at the answer and work backwards. Mm -hmm. They may have a tendency to do that anyway, but it seems to be strengthened. You know, I can remember uh, how many students, when they do their homework problem, would first look at the answer in the back of the book and then stir the numbers <laughs> around, punch them in the calculator, check the back of the book. Stir the numbers around, punch them in the calculator, check the back of the book. They never would look at the ideas going into <laughs> the, you know, what they're calculating. It was, it, it was all about getting the answer in the back of the book and then seeing what numbers you had to fiddle with to get that rather than understanding the problem. You know, that, that's, it's the journey that's, that counts. Right. And so many people say, well, you know, so-and-so says they have a theory about uh, thermite. There's a theory about mini nukes. There's a theory about that's space right. beams. There's a theory about why do you need a theory? I don't have a theory. That is, is the biggest myth that people like to label things as a theory. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, I have a, a philosophy. Let's go look at the evidence. Right. <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, I, I have a, a little analogy to to present to you and say here here you go. Um, let's say I add some numbers: one plus three plus nine plus six plus four plus seven plus two plus three plus nine plus five plus eight, mm -hmm. and it adds up to fifty-seven. Is a number fifty-seven a theory? It's the conclusion based mm -hmm. on the numbers I added. Is it an opinion? No. Is it a view? Nope. Not is it a thesis? Don't think so. Is it is it speculation? Nope. Is it a conclusion based on the sum of the information given? That's right. Bingo. Can you arrive at the same number, 57, if you omit all but the last two numbers? <laughs> Not at all. Nope. Not at all. Evidence works this way. If you want to get the right answer in a forensic investigation, you must look at all of the evidence. You don't start with the answer you want and then go cherry picking the minimum piece of information that will support your your thesis. That's right. You don't have a thesis with with forensic uh, investigations, but the trick is beginning first with establishing what happened. That's right. You first right. must establish what happened before you can determine how it happened, because if you don't know what it is, how can you determine how it happened? Right. Before you can determine who did it and why they did it and so forth. That's right. And one of the biggest secrets of how they run a cover up, I'm going to tell you a secret here. You get people to, to skip that first step and jump to any of the other steps. Skip looking at what happened and start arguing about how it happened, who did it, and why they did it. But when you do those things, if you if you don't know what happened, how can you determine how it happened if you don't know what it was that happened? Absolutely. You have to assume so pretty soon you're, you're solving an assumed problem. You're solving an imaginary problem, not a real problem. And you'll never, ever be able to solve what happened. But people are given answers. Mm -hmm. They usually stop asking questions. You know, people start asking questions. You give an answer, and they quit asking. They don't stop to think, does that answer make sense? Mm -hmm. So they, you know, all the steel was shipped to China and, and, you know, immediately shipped to China. Well, you see a picture uh, taken an hour after the demise of the towers, just mm -hmm. while the dust is clearing the air, and there's... The, the rubble is at ground level, mm -hmm. um, but people then will not question that because they'll assume that was later and I'll steal it to China instantly or something. I'm not saying it didn't get beamed to China. You know, I'm not saying how it would have gotten there, but it wasn't there immediately afterwards. Right. How could you? How could they have removed it that quickly? That needs to be explained. So where did the rumor come from that it was all shipped to China? You need to show me how it got to China in uh, in one hour. Many first responders discuss how there was no rubble there. The ones in Tower One during the demise of Tower Two came out and wondered where, you know, where, they, where they were. They, they thought they came out of the wrong direction of the building because wasn't there a building here? Right. <laughs> wow. That's but right. energy weapons we know exist. We know that direct energy exists. But that is not how I came to the conclusion. I did. I came to the conclusion through the evidence. I didn't even know about. You know, I just never thought about energy weapons before I saw the evidence, but the evidence told me they exist. Right. Now, uh, if you see a, you know, massive steel falling through the air with horrendous volumes of dust, you know, ejecting out of it, 
and then it doesn't hit the ground because it's run out of material. It just all turned to dust. Mm-hmm. That's that's evidence that something that's that fishing. can do that exists. The fact that the the steel beams turn to dust in midair shows that there's a technology that can make it do that. Now, Incredible. what technologies do we know of? There's there's main categories. There's kinetic energy weapons. You know, kinetic energy is, is something beating on something. Right. Um, a breaking ball, a hammer, a missile, a bomb, you know, blowing stuff into chunks. Right. Uh, there's nothing touching it while it's falling through the air. So mm-hmm. that doesn't work. Thermal energy, like, you know, heat and so forth. But there's evidence that the buildings were not cooked to death. Right. So that doesn't work either. The, actually, the reports are initially the dust cloud was cooler than ambient temperature. Okay. So thermal energy is out the window. Kinetic energy is up, out the window. Something that did not touch it, that affected it remotely. And that's it, my definition for directed energy is energy that's directed. Directed by, you know, instru- like giving it instructions mm-hmm. uh, as well as d- directed it geographically you know we want to affect uh, buildings with a WTC prefix mm-hmm. there you go the post office across the street from building 7 as far as I, I know didn't even have a scratch on it Wow. I even went and evaluated the building myself <laughs> the building did not fully spill across the street wow that's, that's not a controlled demolition so this is why it's you know some form of di- energy that's directed and I think we'll agree it was used as a weapon. But, you know, my detractors, one of their favorite things is saying, you can't prove that such, an, 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 such a weapon exists. Yes, I can. That's right. right with the, the building toasted cars. turned into dust in midair. Therefore, mm-hmm. that is evidence that such a technology that can turn buildings into dust in midair exists. For example, the uh, peeled effect on the cars. When I first noticed that, I didn't know what it meant, but I, I could see there was this trend. So I just put that in a category. You know, the peeling effect, it was like split thickness of a car door was peeled, mm-hmm. like it was delaminated. But this is not a laminated structure. That's right. What would cause it to peel? And it was about a year after that that I was wandering around on the Internet and uh, was led to some blog. And I looked, and here somebody had reproduced every single one of the effects that I had already uh, cataloged. And one of these was a peeling effect. Uh, that blog that I happened upon, it was the blog of John Hutchison. So, you know, I'm not saying that is exactly what happened, but here's uh, parallel evidence. So let's go look at how this was caused. And what I present in my book is parallel evidence and actual evidence. The best uh, feedback I've gotten uh, and the best compliment is uh, folks have said it's it's a course in critical thinking. Absolutely. And that is indeed what my intention was. I don't want to tell people the answer. I don't want to tell them, you know, what they are to think. I present them with the evidence, and I kind of walk them through. Here, look at this, and I point the arrow over and have a question. Why is this this way? Right. I'm not making any conclusion from that. I want them to process it. Why do they think this is that way? Like um, a car upside down. Right. You know, why is the car upside down? Why are all the leaves still on the trees next to it? You have a toasted car, but the tree hanging over it still has all the leaves on it and isn't burning. 